welcome viewers. You are watching this special series of Sunset TV, Baatchi, where an honourable member of parliament will interview an honourable union minister. And joining us today are two very special guests. Please welcome Mr. Rajiv Chandrasekhar. He is a member of the Union Council of Ministers and holds twin responsibilities as Minister of State for Electronics and Information Technology and Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. He is focused on implementing Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision of Digital India by expanding and deepening India's tech and innovation economy, developing India as a global talent and entrepreneurship hub. In the early 90s, engineer-turned-politician Mr. Chandrasekhar returned to India from the US to begin his entrepreneurial journey, setting up one of India's earliest mobile cellular networks. A three-term parliamentarian, he started his political career as Member of Parliament in 2006. Delighted to have you in our studio, sir. Thank you. And let's also welcome BJD MP Mr. Sujit Kumar. He represents the state of Odisha in the upper house and is a lawyer specializing in the areas of technology, IP, arbitration and environmental laws. An engineer turned lawyer, Mr. Kumar is the chairman of the petitions committee of Rajya Sabha, becoming one of the youngest MPs to head a parliamentary committee. A very warm welcome, Mr. Kumar. Thank you. So viewers, let's get ready for this very meaningful exchange between the Honorable Minister and Honorable Member of Parliament. Over to you, Mr. Kumar. Minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar. Anji, Namaskar. Namaskar. You are at the helm of two most crucial ministries, especially when India is seen as the hub of technology and the potential skills capital. Personally, I have the highest regards for you, not only because you have been a very successful entrepreneur, investor, and a very competent minister. Thank you. But also because you are one of the very, very few political leaders in our country who understand technology and the innovation space. So it's my privilege to host you for this show. Thank you, Sujit. Over the next 25, 30 odd minutes, we'll be delving into semiconductor, uh, AI, India's entrepreneurial ecosystem, and one of the most contentious issues of recent times, digital personal data production. And we'll be picking your brain on all these issues, sure. and of course, on India's tech vision, as was uh, mentioned by uh, the anchor, Kritiji. And also, I would like to hear from you about the aspirations of India's youth, because we are the most youthful nation in the world, with two-thirds of our population are under 35, half of our population under 25. So let me start by referring to one of the op-ed that you wrote for mm. the Indian Express on 28th of July, 2023, titled, Our Semicon Report Card. And let me quote you verbatim. Okay. The Indian story on electronics and semiconductors has been dismal for decades, with many missed opportunities, lack of political and strategic vision, and incompetence. Independent India's history is replete with instances of how India missed the semiconductor and electronics bus, unquote. Very strong words, Minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar. Not just this article. You have time and again hit the UPA regime by calling it the missed decade. Lost decade. The lost decade. And you have called the nine years of the NDA government of which you are a part as India's decade. I think there is some truth in what you have written and what you often say. But don't you think you are trying to score political brownie points? No, Suji, first, first of all, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure and honor to be interacting with my colleague, uh, uh, albeit political opponent from the Rajya Sabha. Look, I, I, I'm, I stand by every word I write. I stand by every word I speak. And uh, if there is uh, a use of a metaphor like lost decade to describe the 10 years, it is absolutely based on fact. It is based on real experience that we, uh, I, I spent all those 10 years in parliament, most of those 10 years, eight years out of those 10 years I spent in parliament. And I saw the 2G scam, I saw investors uh, leaving, I saw the meltdown of the economy, I saw the banking sector being wrecked. And there is no other way today to refer to that decade other than the last decade because it used to be the perception that India cannot achieve, that what we experienced in our politics is what we are in a sense predestined to experience, that growth will be slow, opportunities will be limited, we will never be a central player in the global space on anything, in the technology space that we will be consumers of technology 
rather than producers. This was the narrative for decades. When we experienced the last nine years, and I say this, uh, I know you will say that I'm saying this because I'm a minister and I'm from the BJP, but the facts and the reality of what we have achieved in the last nine years tell me, uh, as somebody who's now an old man, uh, uh, when I look back on all those decades, that we could have been so much bigger, so much better as a nation if we had used all that time to do what we are doing these nine years. It is the same India, it is the same Indians, uh, there's nothing different about our country, uh, the same states, the same uh, DNA in our, in our blood. But in these nine years, we are galloping, producing, and have a sense of confidence, which could have been there 20 years ago. Uh, a country like China took 30 years to develop its global electronics ecosystem and GVCs and presence and footprint in, in the world. And we were busy at that point pretending to be socialists and, uh, and uh, relying on imports and not building the domestic electronics industry. So in some sense, there is anger. But what I say is based on fact. And I, of course, we are politicians and we will always use the infirmities and weaknesses of our opponents to show up the opponent. But when I say this in the context of electronics or semiconductors, I really mean that we could have been a much further ahead nation in both these spaces today if previous governments and decades of missed opportunities and incompetence had not happened. Sure. Rajiv ji, we are celebrating the Ajadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Hanji. And we are in the Amrit Kal already. Of course. And PM Modi has often articulated his vision that by 2047 we will be a developed nation. So fr from being a developing country to a developed nation, I think technology will be one of the key drivers, yes. right? And uh, PM Modi has also articulated his digital vision of one trillion dollar economy right. in the next couple of years. So that will be twenty percent of our GDP. Correct. So can you can you share this vision with our viewers? No, it is very clear, uh, Sujiji, that in the coming decade, all over the world, the digital economy of the entire world is going to expand because digital and technology is playing a much bigger role in our lives as individuals, as businesses, as governments, as trade, as economy, than ever before in the history of mankind. Sure. So therefore, uh, we today, for if you just look at India, for example, in 2014, when uh, the Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister became Prime Minister, the digital economy was 4.5% of our GDP. Right. Today, in 2023, we are about 11% of GDP's digital economy. And by 25, 26 or 26, we will be 20% of... This is really creating more and more opportunities for our youth. It is creating uh, investments, jobs, and it is expanding the economy at a almost rapid pace. That is why we have grown, gone from 10th in the global league of economies to 5th. Right. And as the Honorable Prime Minister has uh, laid down a marker on the ground, we will become the third largest economy in the coming uh, few years. Right. So technology and digital is disrupting the normal. Mm. Technology and digital are certainly going to shape the future of the global economy and more so countries like India where we have youth, we have young Indians. And the last nine years have transformed young Indians from being diffident and underconfident to being now confident that they can deliver on the global stage, they can create products, they can create technologies that can be deployed globally. So we are, uh, in a lot of ways, in line with the trends that are driving the world. And, and in a lot, of place, a lot of ways, I say to the young generation today, you are the luckiest generation in the uh, history of independent India because it is like everything is aligned. You have a prime minister who has created a framework. We are moving in a direction. There is momentum. And the world today needs the talent and needs the kind of technology that we are creating for their own use. So... I certainly think India is poised to become a pole in this future uh, of, of the world, if you want to say, a future dominated by technology and innovation. Agree. I, I completely applaud yeah. this vision of the PM and, and, and our government. Yes. But you know mm. it better than yeah, anyone yeah, sure. else yeah. that uh, to be a technology leader, mm. you need research. Yes. And we as a nation are pathetic when it comes to our investment in research and development. Yes. If I give you some statistics, we spend less than 0.7% of our GDP on R&D. Right. Comparable numbers for other countries, Israel 4.8, South Korea 4.5, US 3.2 odd, China 2.5 odd. So 
I mean, where are we? I, I, I'm grateful that you know the the government has introduced the the uh, National Research Foundation bill in Lok Sabha. Yes, yes. The very day we are discussing this, Correct. which is a much awaited reform. But uh, do you think we are doing enough when it comes to research and technology? No, look, uh, I'm the first one to say that look, we are not doing enough. We haven't done enough. Uh, the, and one of the simplest ways to understand our place in the global uh, sort of standing in science and technology is. Uh, how many Nobel Prize winners do we have? Yeah. After C.B. Raman and Hargobin Khurana, we really haven't had that kind of investment in science, original scientific uh, uh, research and discovery uh, of the kind that we saw in the early days of our, uh, of our independent nation. So I think there is certainly a need for more and more research. But you have to understand the context in which we find ourselves in this conundrum or a quandary mm. where research hasn't really happened over so many decades. One is that research by its very nature is not something that happens over one or two years. Agree. It is a temper, it's a scientific temper, there are institutions, there are culture that has to be built and research is done over several decades and several years and generations of researchers. We lost that. Right. We lost that early on in the 80s and 90s, we completely finished it and even the great institutions that used to do scientific research were converted into uh, application type of applied science type of institutions. We are slowly and steadily building it back. I would not worry too much about whether it's 0.7% or 1%. That is not necessarily the best measure. But the best measure is how many of our young students are going into doctoral work. How many of them are going to go to post-doctoral work. How many of them see a future in scientific research? How many of them want to become professors? How many of them want to join sci uh, research labs? And so I'll give you one example of our government's thinking to address this uh, gap. For example, in the semiconductor space, we are as one very core part of the vision of our Prime Minister is to create an India Semiconductor Research Center, mm. which will be a private-public partnership, mm. which will focus on all of the cutting edge research on materials, science of materials, physics, the chemistry that goes into this very, very advanced type of uh, technology. So we are building this. The NRF is a classic example of our focus and uh, priority for research. But if you ask me, uh, and to use the same report card analogy, do we have a great report card of the nation on research over the last three decades, four decades? Sadly, no. No, I completely agree. I'm not singling out your yeah, government. Yeah. No, no, no. If anything... No, no, but I, I, I agree as Indians yeah. that we have a lot more that we can I agree. do I agree. to create a generation of scientists. If anything, I think your government has done far more to yes. promote and focus on research than the previous yes. governments. I, I think so, too. Right. And, and uh, let me come to the uh, national software product policy, yes. which was launched by your government in 2019. Sure. Not much has been heard about that uh, since then. So, do you think we have an ecosystem now for, for bringing out world-class software products in our country? Yeah. So, Gigi, I think the definition of products uh, over the last five to seven years has undergone a dramatic uh, rewrite. Yeah. When we used to think about products in the, let's say, 2010-14 time frame, uh, we would think of Windows, we would think of these kind of productized, you know, Windows, uh, Microsoft... Uh, uh, Word or PowerPoint or those kind of software products. The world has dramatically transformed and now SaaS, CPaaS, cloud-based applications have now become the product offerings that more and more consumers use. Mm -hmm. If you see this uh, uh, company, the Indian-owned, Indian-built company called Zoho, yeah. they, they deliver these see products. Yes. Uh, and they deliver it as a software as a service. Yes. Now, software as a service, in my mind, is, a, is the product it's of product. today and is a, is a, its avatars will be the products of tomorrow. So that national software product policy that was envisaged at a certain time with a certain framework in mind certainly did not anticipate uh, this type of uh, dramatic, uh, in a sense, change in the way consumers consume technology. And today, the cloud is everything. And therefore, applications that are resident on the cloud and are available to consumers as a service, mm. 
and there are a number of companies in India today. You read recently about a company in Bangalore called Root Mobile yes. that got acquired. Yes. Those are all technically product companies. Product companies yes. So they do CPaaS, yes. uh, communication yes. uh, platforms as a service. And there are companies in uh, in the in Chennai, the SaaS companies that went public in in in, in the US. So those are all product companies. So therefore, the definition of product has morphed and moved on to all of these solutions. Yeah. And that is why I say one of the big um, sort of ambitions that the Prime Minister laid out in 2015 when he laid uh, launched Digital India was India would go from being a consumer of technologies to be a producer of technology. Yes. And all of these represent that. Uh, it may not be the product as we knew it in our right. uh, lifetime of as Windows 93 or Windows 95. Or Microsoft products. Oh, yeah. So it is, it is certainly a new way of... Uh, building products and solutions. Right, right. Let me now come to the most anticipated and one of the most contentious bills of recent times, sure. the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill, which was uh, introduced in, in Lok Sabha amidst vehement opposition by the opposition parties. And they allege that this is an attempt by the government to have unfettered access to citizens' uh, private data. Yeah. It's an invasion to right of privacy, which has been, uh, which has been uh, uh, called a fundamental right by Honorable Supreme Court in the 2017 judgment. So, I mean, is there any any basis <laughs> to the fears of... Uh, in, in fact, some critics, some experts have also you yeah. know, alluded no, to Sujit, this. Uh, first of all, I think we need to rewind back to how that case uh, came to the Supreme Court. The 2017 judgment? 2000, yes. Yeah. It, it started in 2012-13. Yes, yes. And it was a case because uh, under the UPA, they were collecting data for, uh, for Aadhaar and other databases and they were making no attempts to protect the privacy of individuals and the other data was available Everywhere. all over the place yes. and I raised it in parliament and showed a sheaf of other data that I had got for 50 rupees from Connaught Place and I was a petitioner in that case. Okay. As a member of parliament, because I was not being heard in parliament, I petitioned the Supreme Court along with Justice Puttaswamy yeah. and many others from Bangalore, we were all from Bangalore. Right. And uh, nobody, those, none of those people who stood up in parliament and opposed the introduction right. agreed that privacy is a fundamental right in 2012 or 13. They all opposed it. Uh, Manish Tiwari ji was a minister in the government that said privacy is not a fundamental no. right. So either he's obviously learned <laughs> over the last 10 years or he's changed his colors or whatever. I just wanted to make that point that it is through our... Uh, intervention in the Supreme Court only that the Supreme Court ruled that privacy is a fundamental right uh, and that happened during the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government. We swung into action immediately, created a framework of a law that would protect citizens' rights that the Supreme Court had discovered, uh, had mandated. And unfortunately, the first version of it, hmm. uh, which went through the JCP, of which I was a member, but went through the period of the COVID, hmm was a bill that was very complex and very complicated and therefore it was withdrawn from parliament and a new uh, Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi ji, gave us a new task saying build a much more modern legislation. Now this legislation is extremely important. It has gone through multiple rounds of consultation, yes. deep, public, transparent consultation from across the board. It has, yeah. And so for anybody to oppose the introduction, I find it very strange. I can understand that you oppose it on the floor of the house, you debate it, you expose it. If you have, if you are confident that there are infirmities in the law, there are some weaknesses in the law, make it public during the discussion or the debate, rather than create these imaginary fictional uh, problems, hmm. uh, including but not limited to it is a money bill, which has been proved to be wrong. That it dilutes RTI, which is wrong. Hmm. It, that it it has uh, it has no fetters on the government's uh, ac ability to access personal data. Wrong. So every one of those things contentions that it will become a surveillance state. Certainly wrong. Hmm. So all of these contentions were designed to essentially derail the introduction of a bill. I can understand if there was any one truth in what was said there, I would be as a minister, a uh, minister of state in the ministry, saying, look. We are willing to have a debate on this. We right. will give you a solution. Or if you have a better idea, we have not taken a monopoly of uh, great thinking. But if the opposition has a great suggestion to improve, make it better, we will listen to it. But I think to oppose it at the introduction left a little back taste, especially to oppose it with a whole series of falsehoods. Right. 
Uh, that, I think, was not expected, not required. And I think the bill should be debated. I hope it is debated well. And that everybody who really cares about putting a break on the practice of misuse and exploitation of our citizens' data, because that is what we have to do. Right. That is what the judgment in 2017 wants, has, makes us do. That we put a break on that practice. If anybody is interested in that, we should debate it and pass it. And I believe that the government studied similar bills from across the world. Yeah, we have and seen. even the, the JPC, which was constituted yes. to study the bill, extensively did its research we and did study. did yeah. tremendous amount of work. I was on the JCP. I was on the Joint Committee of Parliament. Right. We did a lot of research. We got a lot of people to consult. And we have, in my opinion, we have evolved a framework that is absolutely contextually Indian, works for our Indian citizens, uh, allows our innovation ecosystem to continue without a complex compliance regime and most importantly carves out all those emergency provisions for the government to access personal data in the case of a pandemic, in the case of an earthquake, in the case, case of a national security incident. So it is a very well written simple bill and I, I would request people to read it. My last question to you Rajiv Sir, ji. Anji. The great technology game will shape the destinies of nations yes. and the geopolitics of our time. So, what technology governance do you think or what technology choices should we make as a nation to not only compete in this great tech game but also emerge as a power? No, I think we are almost on our way there. We are certainly a very different India in the technology space than we were just dec a decade ago. Uh, the whole world is looking at us with great respect and awe. Um, I just recently, two days ago, was with 13 executive directors of the World Bank and who were really understanding and being excited about what India has achieved in using technology to transform people's lives. Right. Forget the innovation is the other, but we have used technology today to transform our democracy, improve governance, bring back trust between people and government. So if you ask me how do I see the future, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has beautifully described it as the India Techade a decade of technology opportunities. Right. And I think that is what it is, that we should look forward as a very confident nation, as a nation of very young uh, people to the next decade of really establishing very clearly our leadership in the technology space and in the economic space. I wish I could go on and on. Yes. It's such an enriching, you know, insight. So thank you, Sujiji, for having this conversation. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Well, sir. absolutely. And as you said, that this is going to be India's ticket. But thank you so much for this candid conversation. Mr. Kumar. Brilliant bowling. And of Thank course, you. Honorable Minister, fantastic batting. Thank you. Well, viewers, that's all we have for you in this edition. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Sunset TV. We're back now from our side.